You know, I'm effectively from France or Burgundy, but I'm not from outside because my grandfather in 42 was deported in Ukraine for three years. He was deported in Ravaroska, in Vif, in Istrich. And so since I am a child, I heard about Ukraine. He told me always that inside the camp we had no food, no drink. It was awful. But outside the camp was worse. And me as a child, I was wondering what could be worse than a camp. So suddenly I decided to go back to Ukraine. And you know, the first time I arrived to Ukraine, the border guy told me, have you been already in Ukraine? And I said, oh, long time ago. I said, why I say that? I've never been. And for me, anytime I come back with a plane on Ukraine, I say, we are back. I get this idea uh, because my grandfather refused to speak, so I didn't know what he did. I asked him many times if he killed people because I was surprised he didn't speak. And uh, so one day I came back to Ravaruska, and in that period, nobody spoke. And suddenly, a new, uh, a new mayor, a new starost of uh, Ravaruska was elected, and he brought me in a forest with a car with 50 farmers. And all these farmers were present at the killing. One he remember, he said, I remember the German arrived alone with three person and motorcycle. They turned and turned and turned in the village with a dog. And in fact, they were looking where to dig the grave. And after the day after, they brought 30 Jews and they forced them to dig the grave. And he remember everything, but the German were listening German music with a gramophone playing harmonica, and one broke his harmonica. And after we found the pieces of harmonica in the ground. So, it was a shock for me because I realized the Jews were killed in public, and also that the German used the Ukrainian teenager, they forced them to come here to dig the grave, fulfill the grave, sell the shoes, etc. And that the people, these poor people, they want to speak because before to die. So when I came back in France, I spoke with the cardinal, I spoke with the Jewish organization, and they told me perhaps you could look around Ravaruska. But after one year, I was still around Ravaruska, so we decided to build Yaradinunum, an organization who has a duty to find all these mass graves. It was a, like a family investigation. I wanted only to know what arrived around Ravaruska. And uh, first I found an old synagogue a young Ukrainian told me, I know where is the synagogue, she has not been destroyed. So we went in a small village, Ugnif, near Avaruska, and we saw the synagogue as big as the church, empty of course. And after we saw a Jewish cemetery, uh, and after we saw a Jewish small synagogue, and so it took me years, it took me three years to find the first mass grave. In a, we wanted to say the truth because in the West, they ignore totally uh, the war here, they ignore totally the genocide here. They, I would say they, they know much more the war in France, the genocide in France and so on. And I wanted to say, be careful, the German attacked the Soviet Union, it was a huge territory. And also they ignore the story, I would say, of Ukrainian, of the partisan, they ignore all these stories. So my goal is, was to be, to be it known by all this continent. When we brought that in Paris, we multiplied the visitors by 10 for the museum, because it was amazing for them. For them, Holocaust was Auschwitz, and that's it. First thing is to, you know, this map was to expose where is Ukraine, because for Ukrainian it's evident, but for uh, somebody from Belgia or from Stockholm, uh, they don't know even exactly where is Ukraine. So it was to, to show where is Ukraine, and that it was in Soviet Union. And the first step was to expose the Jewish life. All these small things have been found in farms around the mass graves. The farmers gave, gave to us, and so wanted to show all picture of Jewish life because the Jews were a huge population in, uh, in Ukraine. It was two million point one. We, we show the numbers, it's an estimation. And you see immediately that some region had a big number, like Lviv, 380,000, but it's in 41. But there are also Jews in Crimea. People ignore 65,452. There were 108 Jewish Kolkos. We want to show it's a crime. It's not a tsunami, a genocide. It's not an earthquake, it's a crime. Every victim has been killed by a killer. Every killer killed a victim. First step is to show the faces of the leader of the shooting. So all these people were the leadership. Because many people ask, it was in Ukraine, so outside people can think it's an Ukrainian 
massacre. No, the headquarter was in Berlin. The SS were taking their orders from Berlin. The genocide was not an Ukrainian initiative because the same genocide was in Belarus, in Russia, in Poland, in Romania, in Latvia, in Lettonia, in Estonia. It was coordinated from Berlin. So it's why you have all these posters were original, written some of them in German, some of them in Russian, some of them in Ukrainian, and some of them in Yiddish. It was all the orders that people give to concentrate the Jews, to confiscate their goods, all that are originals. And in the West, nobody imagine that Hitler can order printing in Russian, because they think Holocaust in West. So here you have the classic roads of the Einsatzgruppen. It's A, e, B, C, D. So they all cross Belarus, Ukraine. The goal was Russia. The goal was for this one was Palestine. The goal was the oil. And the big mistake of Hitler is that he forgot Moscow. So he ran to get oil and he had the problem here, thanks God. You, you see, a face very well known is Paul Blower. Blobel is the guy who was in charge of the destruction of Jews in Kiev. So he's the man from Babiyar. And after he fell down in alcohol, so he has been re-employed to destroy and burn all the corpses. It's why in Babiyar he put mountain of corpses of 2,000 corpses and make them burn. So this guy was really, I would say, deeply, deeply in charge. He was the only one who was not educated. All the other have a PhD. But this one, he was only an architect. But remember this face? This face is the killer of Babi Yar. It was Babi Yar in every village. Not even the city. Sometimes we, we arrive in a very small village. One day, we made 30 kilometers with our car. And our car was totally destroyed because there was no asphalt and other frogs. And when we arrived, the farmers explained that the Germans did the same way to kill seven Jews, only seven Jews. We never found a village where the Germans didn't come, never. So that, that, that was really a genocide. And you see the strategy, because that's the victim in 41, 42, 43. In fact, they kept the last Jews here. So they came, in fact, they arrived from here, but they began the genocide mostly here and came back. So no Jew could, could, uh, could escape. That was a trick. If we estimate on the soil of actual Ukraine, was well, not Ukraine of before, because there is Crimea, there is a part of Poland. Actual Ukraine is around 1.5 1, 1 million. So here it's very special. We, we rebuilt the crime step by step. Each number, one, two, three, four, is a step of the killing. Here is the digging of the mass grave. It's the first step. Either they force the Jews to dig the mass grave, either they force the poor people of the village to dig the mass grave. But they force them. They don't receive any salary. People don't understand. They arrive, they go to see the starost, say, you, 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 tomorrow. That's it. The second step is that they bring them to the mass grave. Some people, this, the guy was the driver, he took a photograph, all that are German photograph. He took a photograph of thousands of Jews who are walking to their death. You see, they carry the old people. Here there is no cart, they have, and they tell them, we bring you to Palestine, or you bring you to work to Kiev, or we bring you in a better city. So take your shoes, take your shoes, take all your jewels, your money, because you will not come back. So people think they are going somewhere. And suddenly begins the shooting. You see a small group, here are a poor lady. We ask them to undress. You see the baggage of dresses. You see the snow. And you see the shooters. Sometimes people ask me why they didn't escape. You see how many Jews? A few ones. You see how many guards around? And you must understand also in the village were nearly no men because it was a war. Most of the men were in Red Army. So when they arrive in the village, it's only old people and children. It was, a, it, it was an order to totally eradicate the continent from the Jews and the Gypsy. The Gypsy too were shot in the same way. We found also 48 extermination sites of Gypsy, of Sigoyner. You must understand also when there is a shooting, they, they call the village, you see. Nobody pays attention to all these people. In some, in some village, they have a car with high voice and they say, we come to see the killing of the Jews. 
and everybody is coming. Because the German wanted to show it was a justice. They didn't, it, there was no secret here. They want, they want to speak. They want to speak because they say, we don't understand, we have 1,500 Jews just behind the house, we have never been buried. So they see, we don't come to, to discriminate, we don't come to show to the finger, we come to bury the victims. It's to bring back dignity to everybody. And there is always this proverb, a war is finished when we bury the last victim. So for them it's very simple, we come to bury the victims. Here you have also old guns that we found near the mass graves. Because you must understand they use machine gun and they are not military, they are not professional. And as they use it too much, they throw it. So very frequently near the mass grave, we found a big one like that. We interviewed 2,000. 2,000, mostly Ukrainian, but also Belarusian, Ukrainian, and now Polish and Romanian, because they did exactly the same. This is also very important. It's the only image done by an artist SS in a village. I think it's Lubny, Patrice, no? Yeah, it's, it's Lubny. It's 70 kilometers from Kiev. So he followed the Jews from the beginning to end. Babia was the same. The, there was a lot of explosion in Kresciatik when the German arrived, and so they took this pretext. They say, oh, it's the Jews who did that. So we'll convocate all the Jews with flyers to Babi Yar, and they wait them to shoot them. Among them, 10,000 Jews were thinking to go to the train station. So in fact, they went to the train station. And so the Germans say, oh, they believe they go to the train station, so you have to bring them back. And at the end, they were surrounded like here, and after they isolate them by groups, and they shoot them. It was a huge quantity of shooters. And one of the leaders of the shooters was Paul Blobel. Here we have a box of bullets. So that's very important. It's real ones. Each box contains 1,500 bullets. So only with one box, you can kill 1,500 Jews. So you imagine it's nothing. You can carry that in a cart. You can carry that on a bicycle. Only one box. So for, ba for Babi Yar, with around 35, it's only 25 bucks like that. So you can kill a whole population with only 25 bucks like that. So here you have the end of the exhibit. The next step, when the German are taken in photograph with the victim because they want a souvenir, here is a photograph of Babi Yar, where the German are stealing the goods and they take picture and here is a trial where the survivors, the Jews, are testimonying in Soviet trial against the killer. Because Soviet Union was the country where was the biggest number of trials, much more than in any country. Here it's a very special thing because we did an excavation. To prove it was true, we did an ex only one excavation. Normally we don't excavate. We excavated in Busk with the archaeologue of the university. And here you see the corpse who appear one by one. There were 17 mass graves, officially no victim. 17 mass grave in the middle of a village. And so you see the, how they were killed by a bullet in the head. Here you see a mother who is protecting her teenager child because they were buried alive. In many cases, they buried them alive. Here is the biggest mass grave. It was containing 450 corpses. Only women and children buried alive too. When you arrive, you know exactly how they, they died. And here it's young Ukrainian who help us to find back tombstones and to bring them back in the cemetery. I remember they said, oh, I, we know where are tombstones. They have been used to make a bridge for the cars. We'll bring them back. So we had a strong help from the village. So I, I would say anywhere I got support from the village. And here's a prayer from the rabbi. That's the rabbi of Lvov, Rabbi Bold, who is making the prayer for the dead Jews of Busk. All these people are the Jews from Vov. And here you have different testimonies from different generations. That was a very powerful testimony. She was 90, 91 and she remembered that uh, they killed a lot of Jews behind her farm and they wanted to force her son to take the gold teeth of the Jews before the shooting and he refused. So they kicked him. So he came back at home and he said, he wanted to force me. So she, she gave a very long testimony. She was very sick. She was on her bed 
but she wanted absolutely to speak. I'm sure she's no more here. She was 91. Area of the last image was very important is the Ukrainian who saved Jews. Because po people forget that 2,300 2, Ukrainians received the medal from the state of Israel to have saved Jews. So all of them are saviors. And to save a Jew in Ukraine was very risky. So they are, I would say, the real hero, simple people, but real hero of Ukrainian nation. This project has been supported by Viktor Pinchuk Foundation since the beginning, not only the exhibit, but our research. After this, uh, this research is, has been supported by German Republic, by French Republic, by Dutch Republic, by Israel State. So today it's really an international project because we, we, we think if we don't do that in Europe, what will we say to Rwanda? What will we say to Cambodia? What will we say to the other genocide? Because unfortunately, many other genocide appear. So this exhibit is a light for the young generation. Me, I say always to young generation, I gave conferences in China, and I say to the people, if one day, only one day, you are in a place with a genocide, don't forget, take your small cellular and take a picture because you can send this picture to CNN and it didn't exist in that time. And me, if there was a genocide, the political decision I would take is to give a cellular to all the cookers, to all the cooks, because all the killers are eating. So they need a cook. You know, we are, I'm not the only one. Yara Dinunum is a big organization today. We're not big, but in the organization, we have 15 people of different religion. What keeps us is that we remember that God is asking to Cain, where, where, where is your brother? He doesn't care about the killer, God. He cares about the victim. It's my same structure. And I think since I am a child, I hear this question of God. Where is your Ukrainian Jewish brother? Where is your Polish Jewish brother? Where is your Russian Jewish brother? He's anywhere under the bushes. So one time I decided to come. And God goes on and says, don't you hear that the blood of Abel is climbing from earth until heaven? And I think we cannot build modern Europe, modern Ukraine, modern America, modern Australia, modern China, above mass graves. Otherwise, God will say, don't you hear that the blood of Abel is crying?